Hey, what's going on? This is Troy, and this is the Planet 76 Podcast, your source for Sixers news, highlights, hot takes, and more. Welcome to the show. Welcome, everyone, to Planet 76. As always, Michael from Trust the Love here with you, and Troy as well What's up? episode 47 we are quickly approaching 50 i saw troy sent me the outline earlier and i was just like wow we're almost at f- i think i keep saying it but like wow we're almost at 50 episodes which is nuts we are there which is crazy and again before we begin please make sure you subscribe to the podcast whether you're on spotify youtube apple podcasts and if you enjoyed i think you can i think you can leave ratings on spotify but if you're if you're on youtube leave a comment and uh, let us know your thoughts on the episode. And uh, yeah, we have some, eh, I would say some pretty substantial uh, discussion here about to go <laughs> about to go down on Planet 76. And uh, Troy, what do you want to start us off with here? Oh, man. Oh, man. Yeah, so uh, we're recording Thursday, April 7th. This is the final regular season episode of the podcast, by the way. And so we've got some, you know, big things coming, um, you know, as we approach playoff time. So uh, first thing first, just want to promote our um, playoff preview episode that'll be coming. So normally record Thursday, post by Friday, um, but as kind of as soon as we know who we're going to be matched up with in the first round, Michael and I are going to drop our uh, round one preview of Planet Seventy Six. Um, as soon as this Sunday, the regular season ends this Sunday and, uh, you know, we'll get something up early in the week for you, um, as you get ready for next weekend when the playoffs start. So just be on the lookout for that. And, uh, yeah, we're recording fresh off a loss to Toronto tonight, uh, up there in Toronto. Danny Green finally got his ring, um, from 2019. <laughs> Feels like forever ago because it was, yeah. um, but yeah, so we're, we're the Sixers, you know, two regular season games to go. And, um, yeah, I mean, I, I know there's a lot to get into for the last regular season episode. So, um, yeah, let, let's go with – why don't we take a look at the standings real quick. So, uh, for those that don't know, the Bucks, Celtics, and Sixers enter today, like, very, very close in the standings. I think two were tied, and the Celtics had played one more game. Bucks and Celtics played tonight. Bucks beat the Celtics, and so the Bucks move right now to the two seed. Celtics the three, Sixers the four. Though they have the same amount of losses as the Celtics. Celtics one game to go. Sixers two against Indiana and Detroit. So, what's your thoughts on how the East is kind of shaking out right now? There's two games to go for the Sixers. I mean, really, just literally down to the wire. And I think I can speak for probably majority of NBA fans when I say that. No one expected things to end up this way. The Celtics had a slow start to the season. No one expected them Mm -hmm. to leap into the top three, which they are right now. Again, they're third, like Troy said. And, I mean, it literally is going to come down to the last game for the Sixers to see where they end up. Obviously, depending on that one game that the Celtics have left. But it seems like the Bucks have, what, a one-game, one-and-a-half game lead on on the Sixers and Celtics? So they are up a half Half game game. on the Celtics and a game on the Sixers. Yeah. And again, owning the tiebreaker on the Sixers. I'm not sure where the tiebreaker is with Celtics and Bucks. Um, but yeah, and the Celtics, their one remaining game on Sunday is against the Grizzlies, who are squarely in the second mm-hmm. seed, meaning that it's likely that they'll be resting their starters on Sunday. Um, so a, a game that could be a toss up between the Celtics and Grizzlies. It, without John ja Morant and those guys, it, I don't think it will be. Celtics will probably look to kick, take care of business, especially if it means something in the standings for them. Um, so just a little nugget <sighs> of information there. But, um, yeah, do you? so right now it's looking like tonight we might have seen a preview of what's to come next weekend. Um, at least that's where things sit right now. Sixers and Raptors are the 4-5. Raptors are pretty firmly in that 5 seed. The Chicago Bulls are the 6 and two games back of them. So, um, wow. What, what's your, you know, if that were to be, what's your initial thought on that? Raptors, Sixers. Well, we talked about it last episode. And uh, to, to, to put it simply, the Raptors aren't my ideal matchup for the Sixers in the playoffs. 
again we rank the teams that I think I think mm-hmm. I think you, when you said you saw my story on Instagram and right. we ranked them based off of that and I think the Raptors were like my second least favorable matchup <laughs> right of course so yep. definitely not ideal in my opinion for the Sixers I love if they jump to three somehow I'd love a Sixers Cavs series to get them off to a great start in the playoffs but with two games Sixers left Bulls. Sixers Bulls even better sure yeah um no Lonzo Ball. Yeah, yeah. So Sixers have fared well against them. I, I, I think I would just really enjoy that for the Sixers to to start off on the right foot in the playoffs. And I'm not saying that the Raptors would beat the Sixers, but it's going to be significantly more difficult than it would be if it was the Bulls, if it was the Cavs, Hornets, right? Whoever, if the Hawks somehow get the fifth seed, which is not possible anymore. <laughs> right. Yeah, so if, again, just a reminder for everyone, if that were to happen, if the Sixers were to jump from four to three, they'd have to have a better record than the Bucks or the Celtics, one of them. And uh, that would mean the Sixers would win out against Indiana and Detroit, and it would require the Bucks. Let me see here. It would require the Bucks to lose two. Which ain't gonna happen yeah. with their remaining schedule. They play the Pistons and the Cavs, and it would require the Celtics again. So if you take the Bucks out of the picture, doing my math real quick, it would require the Celtics to lose their one game to the Grizzlies, likely without the Grizzlies starters, and the Sixers to win their two games. Now that's possible with the NBA, but um, I sure wish the Grizzlies were playing for something because uh, that could be a, a little more likely, but. Yeah, so it, it sure looks to me like it's going to be Sixers and Raptors. And again, that's a rematch of tonight, and I know you have a lot you would like to say, and so I'm going to give the floor to you here. Uh, I, for one, did not catch the uh, majority of the game against the Raptors up in Toronto tonight, and so um, you know that and you know a couple other games if you want to get into, but... You know, what did you see? What do you need to vent about? What do you need to get off your chest? What did you like? Paul Reed played tonight. I saw that. You can talk about that. Um, just go for it. Let's hear it. Well, I want to say things, but I also want to keep things short for the sake of the episode. <laughs> and what I'll start off with is the game, and then I'll talk about some things that I heard mm-hmm. and saw after the game, which is really what kind of got me a little frustrated and kind of annoyed. Okay. Um, first... I mean the game, like the Sixers were up, and here's the thing. Here's what I'll well, here's what I'll start with. Basketball is four quarters for a reason, and I know the Sixers do lose a lot of leads. They do. There's no denying that. And like, they were up in they were up by 15 in the first in the first quarter. They were. End of the first quarter, I believe they were up 12. So, it's just frustrating seeing them lose the lead and then lose the game. Like I said. Sixers, the, the the you know basketball is four quarters for a reason. There's up and there's ups and downs. That's how the game works. But it's just like that's not a game that you should be losing. I know the Raptors are are very good as we've seen. They've beaten the Sixers three times this season. I learned that on the broadcast. Thanks, Kate Scott. And <laughs> it's just like still, it, just a lot went wrong. Um, Harrison and they were without Fred Van Vliet, right? Yeah, and I don't and oh, I don't think OG Ananobi played either again. Right. So uh, Harris didn't have a great game. Harden didn't have a great scoring game. Uh, I'm trying to think what else. I mean, right. the bench was pretty good. Danny Green had a great game. Niang was okay. Milton was good. It's just they played kind. Of, they yeah, really Danny played Green kind of sloppy. I mean, they had a lot of turnovers. There wasn't a ton of. I mean, not shot making because they put up like 110 points, but not a lot of like Harden. Harden took a lot of shots he didn't make a lot, and B took a lot of jumpers that he didn't really make. He had 30, you know, he had 11. He had 11 made free throws, but he took a lot of jumpers. And yeah, he can make jumpers, we know, but it's not really what you want MB doing, especially against a team like the Raptors, who are really good defensively. Um, hmm. And then like. Combine. I'm curious. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm curious as to how we lost. Looking at the box yeah. score again, because I, I caught the last three minutes of the game, and you look and you see the numbers offensively: 19 threes. Yeah. 
They shot 21 for 25 from the free throw line. You know, they shot the ball near 50% for the game. Um, you know, Joel has 30. Harden has 15 assists. Again, a quiet shooting night. Um, but, yeah, so they had Gary Trent went for 30. Pascal Siakam had Siakam. 36 points, 12 rebounds, 12 assists. Yeah, I saw that it was their it was their fourth um, thirty point triple double in the history of the Toronto Raptors tonight. And of course, it's against that's, the Sixers. That's saying something, yeah. <laughs> so, like, what what went wrong? I mean, it was just good shot making from the Raptors, I guess. Yeah, a lot of that and turnovers. A, a lot of things okay. in the fourth quarter where one they couldn't stop Siakam from scoring. I mean, he was literally dominating the Sixers from mid range. Um, turnovers and yeah, just kind of being out, outclassed, out hustled on defense. Like Scotty Barnes was cooking them, Pascal Siakam was cooking them, Precious Achua was like five for six from three. The Raptors are just, I, I don't even have a word to describe them. Like, not really a good or bad connotation, but just the kind of team they are is just so like unorthodox it's just it's just like right. you're, you think you're sitting there watching them do what they do and seeing the players that they have and you're thinking really yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> i think that's a great way to put it yeah yeah i mean they had so again as you mentioned i mean no og ananobi who averages 17 no fred van vliet who averages 20 <laughs> that's 37 points that they made up for by putting up 119 on the sixers um, that's a little concerning considering that's who we might be seeing in the first round of the playoffs. Um, and again, there, there'll be plenty of that to come here in a few days when we preview the series, but man, um, wow. Yeah, I, I don't, I, I agree with you kind of when, where we ranked teams in terms of what we wanted to play when we were talking about this last week, they're not at the top of that list no. and for, for good reason, um, as we've noted. So, um, I've got some numbers for us. Just a couple things I looked at. So Tyrese Maxey is shooting the ball incredibly well this year. He's over 42% from three. That's just amazing. I think he was around 30% his rookie year. Furkan Korkmaz, 29% from three on the season. Again, we're wrapping up the season tonight, uh, at least you know episode-wise. So, uh, And then I've got another statistic for you just to kind of give a picture of James Harden in his last 16 games. Um, I'm going to break down his shooting percentage, field goal percentage, okay. um, in where his percentage was in the teens. So, like, between 13% and 19% from the floor, where it was in the 20s, between 20 and wow. 29. You get the picture. So, this last 16 games, to put it in perspective, he has had two games where he shot in the teens, percentage-wise, from the floor. He's had now three games, because tonight being one, he's had three games where he shot in the 20s, 25% from the floor tonight. Uh, he's had three games where he shot in the 30s, percentage-wise. He's had six, six games in the 40s, and then two where he was over 50% from the floor. I believe those games were against the Nuggets and the Bucks, uh, two, of his, two of his better games with the Sixers. So with that being said, so that's... Eight, if my math is correct, that it, yes, it is. Eight of the last 16 games, James Harden has shot 39% or less. So that's half. Just saying. Yeah. Yeah. What do you got to say about that? <laughs> uh, I, I mean, there isn't really much to say. Uh, what I will say, though, I... I so, like, what I noticed in the game... It's just, it really is just, I think it's shot selection. Either mm -hmm. either it's a contested step back three, which, yeah, he makes them at a pretty high clip, but not at, not contested. Not with a six yeah. foot eight defender in your face. You're not going to make those no matter who you are, unless you're KD, which, I mean, he's an anomaly, but it's, <laughs> it's, it's that combined with kind of soft touch the rim whether it be floaters layups things like that and yeah you know i want to see harden be 
a more aggressive scorer. I mean, he's mm -hmm. he's he's an all time great as a scorer. I know yeah. I know he's not the Houston Rockets equivalent of James Harden anymore, but he still has that in him. He had a didn't he have a thirty nine point triple double a couple weeks ago with the Sixers? Yeah, he's had he's like, had a few. He really, has really it. He has games. it in him. I don't know I don't know what it is, but you know and I'm glad he's shooting because that's what he's supposed to do. That's why the Sixers traded for him. I'm glad he's shooting, but it's just that a lot of times the shot selection's really poor. And if he's shooting poorly, yeah, he gives you the assists. He's a great playmaker. We know this. He does a lot for the offense. But it's just the scoring that he needs to be more consistent with. And you know, he's it's not like he's a it's not like he has poor shot like poor shot IQ. Yeah. He knows what's a good shot and what's not. It's just that right. sometimes I don't know, sometimes either he's a he's forcing a contested shot, especially as uh especially if it's a step back 3 or a step back jumper or it's just kind of a soft take to the rim and he kind of just like falls. <laughs> like mm -hmm. it's funny but it's true because you know you Again, you want him to be an aggressive scorer because that's what he is. He is he is a right. scorer first player. Like we see it. We've seen it this season. We know he still can do it. He just has to tap into that all the time. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's just he wants to be more of a playmaker and not as aggressive of a scorer, but he needs to be because that's why the yeah. Sixers traded for him. That's that's why everyone this season from fan all the way up to Doc Rivers was saying, we need a guard, we need a guard, we need a guard. That's why he's here. He's here to score the ball. And, right. Like Passing is great, but when it comes down to it, he has to he has to be able to score the ball. Yeah, we need it. We need it. Um, and to take it one step further with some of these numbers, so, again, we already established the last 16 games, James Harden has been over 50% from the floor twice. Um, that's the last 16 games. However, four games before that. The first four games of James Harden's tenure in a Sixers uniform, he was over 50% in all of them. Uh, just goes to show you how great that first week was with James Harden in a Sixers uniform. It was phenomenal. Yeah. He's come back down to earth quite a bit since then. Uh, to your point about the aggressiveness uh, there's been four games played in the month of April. James Harden is averaging 11 field goal attempts a game. Uh, in the month of March, he averaged over 14 field goal attempts a game. So he's he's taken a step back. Uh, when we want to see him be aggressive, he's taken three less shots a game. Um, so that's something to keep an eye on. Um, but yeah, we, we need him to score. He, he's been terrific for us, making plays and getting others involved and all of those things because we know that's what he does. His last four games, he's had 15, 14, 10, and 13 assists. However, you're exactly right. And we brought him in here to score the ball. And for me, like my level of concern about James Harden's shooting efficiency, it's kind of like got two aspects to it, I guess, to whatever. Like, because as you mentioned, this is literally one of the greatest scorers in the history of the game of basketball. And so, like, how concerned can I be right. about, like, oh, my gosh, James Harden doesn't know how to like score. Like, how far are we willing to go as to say, I won't get into right. too much, but Harden's washed. Harden sucks now. We should, like, I won't, I won't start because I'll go on if I'm on a tangent. But, <laughs> how, like, how far are we going to go to that, like, to your point, to that extent, how far right. are we going to go with this? Right. Yes, I, exactly. Because there is concern. Yeah. Yes. It's like, okay, we agree. Yeah. James Harden, we would love for him to be a little more efficient, love for him to shoot a little more, love for him to look for his own, love for him to take smart shots and that kind of thing. But it's like, again, this is James Harden yeah. <laughs> and he, he's more than capable. He's had great games with us. It's not like he's, yeah, uh, you know, it, it's okay. Some of, some Sixers fans to your point, need to remove their hand from the panic button a little yeah. bit uh, and remember who <laughs> you can we're say talking that. about. You can say that again, dude. You know, um, I remember watching the Sixers game the other day, or maybe it was something someone said, you know, about Jimmy Butler kind of when he was with us that one season. He didn't have a great regular season, uh, but, you know, he played pretty well for us in the playoffs. And so maybe James Harden's going to turn it on a little bit. We would love to see that. Um, but, yeah, just some, some numbers on him. 
Uh, again, Sixers, two games coming up, Indiana and Detroit, both very winnable games, but we'll see if it matters or if they are squarely in that four spot. Um, also worth noting, so Matisse Thibel, as many of you know, uh, was ineligible to play tonight in Detroit, obviously a vaccine-related thing, um, and this is a possible playoff matchup, so that's a starter, Sixers' best perimeter defender. Uh, who might not be able to play in Toronto. We found that out today, I think. Yes. Right? I don't think that was we public did. knowledge until today. <laughs> yeah. Or no, it was yesterday, right, I think? Okay. Either way. Right. Yeah, it might have been yesterday. but. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we've already – I mean, I have it on here on the outline, but I'll just ask it too. We've kind of – Giving it something, giving it something. Uh, James Harden, his tenure as a Sixer. So far, running all the numbers we've done and all of that fun stuff, what would you, how would you grade it? How would you grade regular season James Harden for the Sixers? Looking at the shooting percentages, you would be very much inclined to mm -hmm. rate him very poorly because a lot of basketball is scoring the ball and how well can you score it how well can you shoot the ball and from this from this perspective you look at the numbers and say oh well Harden hasn't been playing great which you'd be right but there's more to it than just the shooting percentages because as we've been talking about for this episode Harden is still a fantastic offensive player as a passer as a playmaker as a distributor as a ball handler all those attributes he has them and he still, despite the shooting and scoring numbers, he still has made the game so much easier for guys like Maxi. We've seen it for guys like Embiid, Harris, Thibel. Matisse Thibel has, has had the best stretch of his career since Harden's been here. And I'm not saying it's a coincidence, but I'm not, not saying it's a coincidence. So right. I still think Harden has had a massive impact on the offensive end of the game for the Sixers. That being said, I think I give him a B. I think I give him a B. Okay. B on the nose. No. Okay. Wait, is a B minus lower than a B? Yeah. All right, I'll give him a B minus. Okay. I think that's yeah. fair. I think that's fair, and I think you. It's well said because, and 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 thank God <laughs> that like James Harden is so good at other things on the floor. Thank God that like James Harden can shoot the ball twenty five percent from the floor, but have fifteen in assists and ten rebounds or whatever like. That's significant, and that is helpful to this team. Um, now, again, we would love for him to have a triple double. Sure, with, you know what I mean, or, or or to shoot forty five, fifty percent every night. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm just again, we've said it. We're we're ready for the playoffs here on Planet seventy six. Uh, speaking of the regular season, though, coming to a close, so is the MVP race. Uh, since that is a regular season award. Uh, we're going to have a little fun with this one. I'm going to give you just a few numbers. For those of you that don't know or you haven't listened to Planet 76 or you haven't watched the six. Or you've been living under a just, rock. Or you've been living under a rock. Joel Embiid is very much in the MVP race. Uh, he is averaging 30.4 points a game, over 11 rebounds, almost 12, four assists a game. His last nine games, by the way, uh, points-wise, here we go, 30 27, 37, 29, 37, 29, 44, 45, and then 30 tonight against the Toronto Raptors. Um, worth noting, Joel Embiid averaging 33.7 minutes per game, and that would be the lowest minutes per game by any player who averages over 30 points a game in an entire mm -hmm. season. Uh, yeah, like that's like ever. Like that's ever. The lowest minutes per game ever for someone averaging over 30 um and i think there's obviously a lot to be said for joel Embiid and what he's been able to do this year and um, i'm gonna let you i'm gonna put i'm gonna put 45 seconds on a clock okay. <laughs> and i'm gonna give you 45 seconds to tell me why joel Embiid is your <laughs> mvp <laughs> all right you ready yep. you tell me when to start Let's it go Let's all go. right go well just to put it simply, I can go a little more in depth, but to put it simply, Joel Embiid was an MVP candidate last year. He, he almost won the award. He was very close to winning the award, but due to games played, I'm assuming, that's like the only reason I can think of, he didn't win. 
Nikola Jokic won. And this year, he's having an even better year. He had a historic seat. He had a historic level season last year. Well, he did have a historic season last year, whatever. And he's having another one this year. He's having an even better mm. season last year. And yeah, there's been other players who are great, who are MVP candidates, but I really think Joel Embiid has had the best individual season this year. Not to mention he's averaging 30 per game as a center. Last person who did that was Shaq. And I believe Shaq won MVP that year. Time. Okay. Very is that good. wrong? Is that... Is, did Shaq win MVP that year? If he didn't, he got robbed by Steve Nash, as he would say. I don't yeah. know who won it. <laughs> Actually, I meant Does good. Thank you. Joel Embiid for your MVP consideration, Shout folks. Shout out to Kate Scott. Shout Woo! out to Kate Scott. I will say this, uh, just to add a little something there. Like, f- for Joel Embiid to do what Joel Embiid did yeah. pre-James Harden, so a.k.a. the first 60 games of the season, to have the Sixers very much in the Eastern Conference race without an all-star, without a first-team all-defensive player, without a your point guard, is just remarkable. I mean, Joel has carried this team. Um, at sometimes this Sixers team looks like an AAU middle school team if Joel is not on the floor. And so it's like, when you think of value to a team yeah. it's Joel Embiid I mean if, if your team like to me if your team looks bad when you're not on the floor you should win the MVP I'm just saying um because he's just been that good and that valuable to the 76ers without Joel Embiid this team is nowhere near the playoffs you know what I mean think about that um and you think about the guy who's over in the Western Conference Nikola Jokic they are a six seed in the West right now, and they're only two games away from a play-in. Think about that. There's two games left in the regular season. I don't know what the. I don't know if it's even possible, but like if no, they're going to lose two so and close. the seven seed wins two, like they're two games out from possibly being in the play-in. Um, Sixers aren't like that's that's. I'm just saying. <laughs> so, and I get that it's the Western Conference, and you know I get that there's another guy in Milwaukee who's pretty freaking good at basketball. Um, but let's not forget what Joel Embiid has done this season. I have an update. Period. Shaquille right, O'Neal averaged <laughs> 29.7 points per game in 2000 when he won MVP. So 22 years was the last time a center slash, I guess, big man averaged 30 and won MVP. Right. And like I said, Embiid's averaging 30 this year. First time a big has averaged 30 Last time it happened, they won the the, the person who averaged right. thirty won MVP. I can't speak English, but hey, it's okay. Hey, well, I mean, the scoring title. So Joel Embiid thirty point four a game. LeBron James, who's you know clearly sitting down for the rest of the yeah. season, is at thirty point three. Um, you think Joel wants that title? I think he does. I think he does. I think it means a lot to him. I think th- I th- I know the MVP means a lot to him, but I also think the scoring title means a lot to him as well. Yeah, we shall see, my friend. We shall see. Um, I will say this to close. We do have a very, very big announcement. Uh, so, again, one, you know, the playoffs, we're, we're going to be pumping out episodes left and right. Um, but we're going to get, a obviously, again, our preview episode for the first round, likely, with the Toronto Raptors. We'll get that early part of this, you know, coming week for your listening and viewing pleasure as you get ready for the playoffs with us here at Planet 76. Uh, To go along with that, we are adding, I guess we can say, a new feature uh, to the podcast. Not a new segment because it's a whole different thing, but a new feature for the playoffs um, called Planet 765. You get the countdown vibe there. Five-minute recaps after each playoff game. Uh, We're so clever over here at Planet 76. (laughs) So Planet 76. I'll give all credit to Troy because that was his idea. Minute recap. And so what this is going to be is uh, Michael or myself will be releasing, you know, just a five minute or less episode after each playoff game. Just to, you know, for if you watched the game, if you didn't watch the game, just to let you know what happened, give you a recap, give our thoughts, give you some stats. And um, yeah, they're just going to be very, very short, very simple. Uh, just a breakdown of what we saw in game one, game two, game three, game four. And, uh, yeah, so it's going to be five-minute recaps each playoff game. We hope you'll tune into those. We're still going to have regular episodes, of yes. course, 
Um, but these are just kind of a fun way to um, just add a little something else for the playoffs. If you can't listen to a full episode, you didn't catch a game, um, we promise that we'll have a recap episode for you to let you know all that you need to know and to get you ready for the next one in the playoffs. So uh, just be aware of that. Be on the lookout for that. And uh, it's going to be fun. Again, we're, you know, we're just going to kind of probably alternate or something. Uh, we'll figure it out, but it'll be one of us who will give you some information on the Planet 765 Minute Recaps. Yes. Perfect. Perfect. Let's go. Let's go. All right. Well, I think now it's not a wrap officially for the regular season, but that's a wrap from us here on Planet 76 for the regular season. We will see you with the Round 1 Series Preview. Yes. Between the Philadelphia 76ers and we don't the mystery, know. But likely, the team of mystery. <laughs> the team of mystery, a.k.a. probably, most likely, the Toronto Raptors. <laughs> yeah. Here we go. We will see you then. We'll see you in a few days for that episode. Peace. You just listened to an episode of the Planet 76 podcast. Hey, we appreciate you joining us for this episode. Whatever platform you're on, why don't you hit that subscribe button for us, and we'll see you next time.